Truman did not respond to Ho's letters. He had been in office only four months in August 1945 and had not had time to formulate a policy on Indochina. There was quite a division in the State Department over Indochina. Both the Far Eastern office and the European office were in complete agreement that we wanted a strong France recovered in Europe the, from the trauma of uh, uh, Vichy and the defeat in the war. And the Euro but the European division felt the, to help get the French back on their feet, uh, we should go along with practically anything that the French wanted. The Allies had worked out a compromise plan to disarm the Japanese. Above the 16th parallel, the Chinese would take the surrender of Japanese troops. The British would do the same in the south. They arrived in Saigon in early September. The British commander, General Douglas Gracie, was a seasoned colonial officer with limited political experience. His orders were to disarm the Japanese and maintain law and order. He had absolutely no mandate whatever to uh, start talking about handing over um, French into China to anybody other than the French. He had his straight, strict instructions. The British rearmed the French and helped them drive the Viet Minh out of Saigon. The Viet Minh fought back, but they had few weapons to use against the French troops. In the south, the French retained control. In the north, Ho's Viet Minh had widespread support, but they also faced a problem, 150,000 nationalist Chinese troops. The Chinese came to disarm the Japanese. They stayed to loot and disrupt, and they threatened to remain indefinitely. Desperate to expel the Chinese, Ho Chi Minh negotiated with the French. In March 1946, they reached an agreement. The French colonial authorities displayed their power as Ho Chi Minh, president of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, came to confirm the agreement permitting French troops back for a limited period. In return, France recognized the new Vietnamese state and the Chinese army left. Ho Chi Minh was gambling that the French would not try to seize power and that a long-range agreement could eventually be negotiated. A truce was concluded. There were to be future negotiations to settle the problems between us and France. Under these conditions, we allowed a certain number of French troops to take the place of the nearly 200,000 troops of Chiang Kai-shek, which were to evacuate our country as soon as possible. So we had some breathing time to consolidate our forces. The French in Hanoi greeted the arriving troops as conquering heroes. The Vietnamese stayed home. Ho Chi Minh traveled to France to continue the negotiations. But the French cabinet had collapsed. There was no one to negotiate with. Ho had to play tourist until a new coalition was formed. While he waited, the French administration in Saigon, acting on its own, declared the southern part of Vietnam separate from the north. It was a violation of the March Agreement, and Ho wondered if there was any point to further negotiations. Should I go back home, he asked. He was told the new government would straighten it out in Paris. In 1946, Ho had been famous as a patriot for a quarter of a century, and the Vietnamese in Paris turned out to welcome this first president of an independent Vietnam. The French greeted the veteran communist formally as a chief of state. At the time in France, communists were part of the government. 
In public, relations were cordial, but in fact, the French and Vietnamese negotiators were far apart. The negotiations held at the historic Fontainebleau Chateau went badly. The Vietnamese insisted that southern Vietnam was part of their country. The French would not budge. When the meeting began, the chief of the French delegation, Max André, said to me, we only need an ordinary police operation for eight days to clean all of you out. <laughs> there was no need for negotiations. The solution had to come from Fontainebleau. Then the negotiations at Fontainebleau failed. From then on, relationships deteriorated. The climate deteriorated. The March Agreement was dead. With French and Viet Minh forces at close range, the fighting escalated. There were provocations on both sides. In November 1946, the French shelled Haiphong. Many French officers believed only force would stop the Viet Minh. When we visited Haiphong afterwards, all Vietnamese neighborhoods were completely wiped out. They were dead, buried under debris. It is difficult to know the exact figure. But the larger part of the city, it seemed to us, from what we saw, almost the entire Vietnamese part of the city had been destroyed. General Phong tried to reason with General Jap. Listen, I said, I know war. Murders, deaths, destruction, bridges blown up, burning houses. This is unthinkable. We have to prevent this. He said to me, you listen. Politics come before economics. The destruction is not important. The deaths, one million Vietnamese deaths, not important. The French will die too. We are ready. It will last two years, five years if necessary. We will no longer give in. By late 1946, Ho Chi Minh's government was forced out of Hanoi, out of the cities. The first Vietnam War had started. The French were confident that they could wipe out Jap's ragtag army quickly. They were a modern army with modern weapons, most bought with U.S. aid. The Viet Minh had widespread support from the peasants. I heard about Uncle Ho, who fought for the rights of the peasants and the workers. So as a peasant who had suffered a lot, I realized that the only correct thing for me to do was to follow the same path. At first, we did not have any weapons except for bamboo spears. But in the northern part of our country, they were producing arms. I was appointed to go there to report on the situation in the south. Uncle Ho told me that he carried the south in the depth of his heart, and I should tell him what we needed so that the central government could supply us to fight the French and drive them out of the country. I replied that we needed guns. Uncle Ho said that the central government could only give us so many guns because they did not have many. The main thing he said was to capture the enemy's guns and use these guns against them.